Lots to cheer if you're in local markets. The benchmark index has rallied past the 7,500 level for the first time this year. So the big question is, what's driving all this optimism and is there fuel left in the tank? So for some insights, let me bring in Robert Ramos. He's the Union Bank First Vice President and Trust Officer. Nice. Robert, good to have you once again on the show. When you come, there's always something positive going on for the PSE. I feel rock and roll this, these days. Uh, this week alone, we're talking about the benchmark index gaining more than 3%. Take a look at those surges. Uh, yeah. An uptick here, a jump there. Um, I want to know, you know, and just to put it in, con in contrast, right? Last week, the benchmark was stuck trading within a very narrow range. Right. What do you think is going on here? Well, I think it's pretty much foreign flows coming back in. That's one. You have some positivity, I think, from... Uh, from an administrative government standpoint, you see our president uh, reinforcing his belief that, you know, reinforcing the notion that graft has no place in the government. That's one. Uh, number two, we always had our local market, uh, our local investors supporting the market. But now that, you know, the foreigns see that this is an opportunity, then they are buying. And that's, that's it. That's, that's it. Foreign, foreign funds coming back in, local. And then, of course, the local investors. With the market moving up, they're seeing, okay, they're getting left behind, so they have to follow. They have to keep on investing. But between last week, when there was no clear catalyst, and in fact, foreign funds were leaving the boards, right. to this week, um, there was no major trigger. I agree. Uh, if you look at it, there is no major trigger. Um, earnings are pretty much in line with what we expected. Do I see fantastic, er uh, uh, fantastic earnings on a per uh, company basis? It's not there yet. So it's just the flows, nothing more. I guess I'm just wondering if there's something these uh, global asset managers know that we don't. Um, so given this context, do you think it's uh, still a buying opportunity or is it time for a profit taking? Well, I think it depends on, of course, on your risk palette. At 7.4, well, my personal range, looking at a 5 to 8% uh, corporate earnings growth, it's about 7.3 to 7.7. So there, there is some, still some legs. But uh, at this point, maybe for some people, if they're happy with their gains and they can pull out for some, for the others, then maybe they can ride it a bit more. 7-7 seven, seven by the end of the year, you think? Yes. Conversely, though, uh, we're just looking at the peso, which is still at multi-year lows. It's, hold, it's been holding steady the last couple of sessions, but take a look at that. Uh, consensus forecasts say that by the end of 4Q, it will be uh, at around 51, br reaching 51 to a dollar. Um, it, what's going on here? Is everyone just waiting for a positive catalyst to the peso? Well, same thing. I think, well, personally, I agree. It's probably going to end closer to 51 at the end of this, uh, by the end of this year. Um, is, there any, is there anything that we should do? Is there any, well, of course, you know, what's happening? Why is the peso weakening against the U.S. dollar? Simply because uh, interest rates in the U.S. are going to move up. So what happens? People tend, tendency is to sell the peso and invest in the U.S. dollar. So. What happens to us if we want to defend against this? Maybe the local regulator will think of increasing, uh, increasing interest rates locally. But I think at this point, they are comfortable at these levels. Do you personally think they should be increasing interest rates already? Well, they have uh, said that they will increase interest rates. It's probably going to happen maybe at the later part of the year. Uh, at this point, I think data-wise, uh, we're fine. There is no immediate need to increase interest rates. There's no urgency there. Yes. Robert, this is JP down at the studio, of course. Um, l listen, I'm glad you brought up interest rates in the U.S. because I wanted to ask about the Fed's minutes. Now, I'm looking at a chart here that really tracks the Fed's balance sheet, and they did say in the recent minutes earlier this morning that they're ready to trim this uh, particular this 4.5 trillion dollars in assets that they actually have. And the, uh, what they're saying also is this could actually affect the path of the rate hikes that the Fed's on. It could slow it down. If that does happen, how how might this impact, say, local markets in terms of equities as well as in Forex? Good oh, question. Very good question. Well, if they don't increase interest rates uh, as fast as they plan, what happens? You have all these foreign investors might decide to <laughs> trickle in the Philippines. That could be one of the reasons why our market is surging as such. And in terms of the Philippine peso, maybe the 51, it, we won't depre depreciate as much since you'll have uh, more people selling U.S. dollars and buying the peso. So there might be some strength for the Philippine peso by the end of the year. Well, the, the, another big question, though, is the overvaluation concerns, right? I mean, we are still, uh, you know, contending with that problem. If you take a look at where local stocks are sitting vis-a-vis -vis the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, take a look at that. Well, the gap here shouldn't be as, as wide, but orange line denotes the PSEI, the benchmark index, the yellow line is MX, MSCI Emerging Markets Index. 
Uh, we are still trading at about 18 times forward right. earnings. That's the highest in the region. The chart shows that the premiums for local stocks are on the rise and the, the comparison here is actually at the widest in six months. Uh, what's going to convince the big fund houses to stay? Well, what's going to convince the best, uh, the bigger fund houses to say is this. Number one, do they see the U.S. dollar weakening against the peso? Because there, maybe there is some uh, space to come into the Philippine stocks. And uh, number two, do they see something we don't in terms of, as you said earlier, in terms of earnings? Is there something that's going to happen? Uh, one of the things that, they might, that, that is a plus for them is that, okay, they see that our, there is a push towards infrastructure spending. They might see that as a great positive, and they might be investing in select firms that uh, are playing in that particular space. But for that matter, if you look at the landscape across Asia, there would be more, uh, if you just, you're just 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 basing it off of PA ratios, we could say that, for instance, Indonesia is a better buy, True. Thailand is a better buy at this True. stage. True. From, from, a, from a numbers standpoint, that is definitely true. But of course, this is this is where you drill it in terms of the, <laughs> the earning surprises. I think that's one thing that none of us can predict. And lastly, Robert, uh, talking about earnings, uh, some Wall Street banks are already saying that earnings per share growth in the Philippines will go down this year, uh, especially for some of these blue chips. What's your forecast? Um, well, I don't think, uh, pretty much, I think that all of the forecasts will be in line. Um, I'm, I'm not as bearish as they are, um, maybe because we're on the ground and we do see we do see some you know, uh, we do see some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, of, of course, you know, if I were to ask to look at particular sectors, again, you know, I, I'd li I'd limit it to a couple that I think have uh, potential growth. And those would be probably infrastructure, of course, as I said earlier. That's where the spending will be, and who will fund the infrastructures? The banks. What names do you like? Well, uh, of course, there is the biggest bank in the Philippines, and that, that might help. Um, big three are good buys at this point. And, of course, the bigger, the bigger infrastructure players, uh, the MPI also, of course, those are <laughs> well, interesting. Well, that's pretty much the only pure infra play in the index, right? Yes, yes. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Robert Gramas, first Vice President and Trust Officer of Union Bank. Thanks for your time today.